are celebrating an extra special day here down in Miami. It is the seventh anniversary of Supercar Saturday. How are you guys feeling? I mean, this must be so exciting. Exciting and hard to believe. Seven years, man. I just want to say thank everybody for all your support. I mean, we went through COVID. We went through moving locations. Big shout out to Seminoles Hard Rock Casino for letting us come here to our new home. Thank you, Elo, for being here from day one. Come join us today at the Seminole Hard Rock Casino from nine to 12. My guy, Elo. <laughs> More importantly, you gotta say thank you to the community too, Absolutely. because the community has always been here for us. They've been here from day one. We've moved it from, you know, Pembroke Pines to, you know, the malls, and we finally got a home that we're gonna call it the real home. This is where it's gonna be at. And if you don't know, this is the biggest concentration of supercars in one spot in the world. Awesome, awesome. So, so come join us today for what is guaranteed to be an amazing Supercar Saturday. Thank you, Savage Garage, for always coming out and supporting us, too. In seven years of Supercar Saturday, can you tell me some of your favorite moments, favorite people that you've met over the years? I have met the most amazing car guys in this seven years. As a matter of fact, my entire roster of friends have changed 150 times over and some amazing cars. I remember when I saw the first uh, McLaren LeSabre, at Supercar Saturday, I mean, I was just bored by it. I mean, this is like an incredible one-off McLaren piece. And there are some cars that have been at Supercar Saturday. I mean, when the Di Tommaso showed up, I mean, there's just some amazing cars that come to the show. And it's about a community. And for me, I am absolutely bored and love the fact that the community is all out in force to make this the best and the most lucrative and the most incredible car collection in a one day show ever. Yeah. yeah, I think, I don't think people really understand how much of a community we are. I mean, we just spent an entire week together, supercar rallies, museums, lunches, dinners, just spending time together, being a part of this community is, is almost like a family. I know that sounds really cliche, but I feel like I spend so much time with everyone down here, getting to see their new cars, talk about their passions with their own cars. It's, it's really fun to be a part of. It is a community. As a matter of fact, it's the largest community of supercar owners in the world. Yeah. And I must say, bravo, because we're in a state where the sun is out 85%, 90% of the time. So why don't you take your bad boys out? I mean, California wants to mess with us. We're telling California we're the kings of the supercar world. I think that's the best thing about Florida is you don't have to have a weekend car because your weekend car can be your daily driver down here. It is your daily driver. As a matter of fact, I have so many cars that I don't sometimes when they ask me, what's my daily driver? I, I'm kind of, kind of confused because you could drive a supercar every day. Yep. It's very, very possible. Yeah, and it's cool. I feel like a lot of these cars, and this is what I tell people when I'm down here, I could be driving down the highway and I see a car from an owner I met here at Supercar Saturday and I know wherever he's going, I'm excited to be there. And you know where they're going because we're all a part of the same chat. Yep. So it's kind of really cool. Like we know exactly what they're doing, when they're gonna do it. And it's really a, an amazing collection of cars and really interesting folks too. So I like cars, but I also like the owners of the cars. Yes. So when the owners of the cars and the cars are perfect, then we're a match made in heaven. I think it's cool. So I know I know the show is called Supercar Saturday, but we get a lot more out here besides supercars. I mean, we get rad rods, we get custom cars, American muscle cars. We really get every bit of the community out here together. Yes, and you could see today I decided to bring some muscle. So I brought the Lamborghini rad rod that you very well know. And that's obviously the only Lamborghini rad rod in the world. But on this other side, I brought a 1989 Mercedes 560 Koenig Special right-hand drive from England. How cool is that? <laughs> I mean, when I drive this down the streets, it looks like no one is driving it, like the invisible car. Do you have to go uh, in reverse through drive-thrus? 
Not really. I just have to stretch my elastic arm across, you know. But up next to it is a 190 Evo 2 DTM. Very special car, Rude Merck conversion out of England. And today I thought, you know what? I haven't brought this two Mercedeses out. So let me bring the two Mercedeses out as a pair. And these are my two bad boy Mercedes vintage in my collection. And I thought, let me bring them out. And it's such a great day to do that because you're gonna have all kinds of genres of cars here, classics. Like you said, Japanese, JDM, um, you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, everything under the moon will be here that it's called Supercar Saturday. And for me, a definition of what Supercars is, it's a very special car to the owner. Look, two amazing, look at that. Super has just showed up. How cool is that? How cool is that? I think that's the cool thing about Supercars. If you actually look up the definition of Supercars, there isn't a hard and fast rule of what makes a car a Supercar. They just kind of are or they aren't. And I think that's, that's a pretty cool gray area to play around in, especially for a lot of these cars. They're all collector cars, but a lot of these enthusiasts out here, I mean, they're real car enthusiasts. They know their car. They're excited to be out here. They're excited to talk to Another us. Another Supra. Oh More my Supra. God, Jesus. Got... Like, look at this. It's just insane. That's the ultimate Japanese muscle car. We look are coming out in force for the seventh anniversary. We, I mean, we haven't even gotten started yet. I'm excited to see what it's, shows up it's today. It's 8.30 and we're already approximately 150 cars. We'll probably have 500 plus cars today. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it'll be a great show. And where is your car? You were meant to bring your car. I'm going to put you on blast. Well, remember how we said that part of car ownership is about the story? Well, my car exploded. So that is part of my car story. So I, I will bring it down when I'm when I'm when done repairing it. It's safe. It's safe to drive on the road for me and for everyone else. Uh, but that it'll be cool when I finally bring it down here. I'll, I'll get to tell the story of the car. I've, we'll I've been through special. a lot. I'll be the one interviewing her. I would love that. That that car has been really special to me by Lotus Savora. We bought it three years ago, drove it across the country. It's been blown up, it's been wrecked. Uh, and I just bought it officially as my own car a few weeks ago. So I'm, I'm excited to have a car that I have so much history with. There you go, We're waiting on it. And you heard it first, I'll be the one interviewing her. favorite American cars, but it doesn't have American racing history. It is a 4GT. Now, can you tell me about the Le Mans history of the 4GT? Well, if you've seen the movie, you know, uh, Ford first won Le Mans in 1966. They won four years consecutively up through 69 and the car never raced again. Ford wanted to continue that tradition on the 50 year anniversary and they developed this new GT specifically to race at Le Mans and they won in 2016. 50 years later to the day they accomplished the feat. So uh, pretty good story, continuation of the history and uh, we ended up with this beautiful machine. And your car has something special. Can we take a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, the people who made this car uh, important and made it successful, I have some nice autographs. Uh, most proudly, the three drivers at One Le Mans have signed this car. Uh, Raj Nair, who was the head of the Ford program that made this car happen. Edsel Ford, uh, Chip Ganassi, who runs the racing team. Larry Holt, the uh, mastermind at Multimatic. Billy Johnson, uh, one of the test drivers and race drivers, and then Garen who was one of the chief designers. So it's got some pretty good personal touches that mean a lot to me. And you've been to Le Mans, haven't you? Yeah, I was actually there in 2016 with the Ford Group in the suite when they won, and that was pretty epic in itself. So what possessed you to buy this car? So as a child, I had uh, GT40 slot cars. Yeah. And as I got older, you know, the new, the 0506 GT came out. I had some success in my life and I purchased one of those. 
And I really got entrenched in the Ford culture and the and the members and the people that uh, are part of that Ford family. Uh, made me feel special and of course I wanted to continue that when I was offered to get the new car. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing this with yeah, us. My pleasure. generation of car enthusiasts born from one movie franchise and if you're looking at the Toyota Supra next to me you already know what it is fast and furious now this Supra wasn't one of the originals but we did see the Supras GTRs JDM cars throughout the entire franchise into supercars in the newer years and we're excited to celebrate the emergence of yet another fast and furious movie fast and furious X or 10 is supposed to be coming out here in the next few weeks and we are celebrating it full force today with the JDM scene here at Supercar Saturday. is a car that is near and dear to my heart. It is one of the most fun that you can drive legally on the road here in the US. This behind me is a Lotus Elise. So this has a Toyota 2ZZ platform, which is great because it means that you can drive the heck out of this car and never be worried about its reliability or the cost of parts. They're incredibly light and they don't have power steering or ABS, a lot of those features that nanny other cars. The cars are so incredibly nice. It feels like you're going mock Jesus when you're in traffic. And they are just so special to have out here on the road, especially for the seventh anniversary of Supercar Saturday. community has been a long-standing mix of OEM enthusiasts, stock car enthusiasts, purists, and modifiers. So behind me is a C8 Corvette. You see this entire row here of different generations of Corvette, decades of the Corvette. But what makes this C8 behind me really cool is the way that it is modified and displays the engine. So come take a look around the back with me. You can check out the wheels, the custom modification cover here, the covers, the frunk got custom wheels. Everything is paint matched to the car to make it look incredibly OE. But if you've ever seen a CA car in person or you've seen how they've been modified, you know that this isn't what they typically look at. But the most notable part about this car specifically, if you come around here and you take a look at what's going on underneath the rear hatch here. So the C8 Corvette obviously is known as the mid-engine Corvette. You see the engine back here, but the engine cover back here is completely dressed. It's plexiglass so you can see down into the engine decorated with the C8 Stingray modification stickers all around it. been increasing in popularity here at Supercar Saturday, as you saw with the Lotus Elise, a great British racing car with a ton of heritage. And behind me is a Triumph TR3. These cars are becoming increasingly rare over the years and out of just under 60,000 ever produced, it's estimated that less than 10,000 of them are still running and on the road today. These cars are super quirky. You can tell from the front end, they're very easy to identify. They have a lot of qualities of the car that are very iconic to Triumph. And if you come around the back here, and look at the cabin here. You can see this really cool cover because this actually does not have a hard top or a rag top auction. You have this leather covering right here that only covers the inside interior of the car. You can see all of pegs right here where it comes apart. And if you're driving and you wanna keep the passenger side cover, you simply unzip it halfway and enjoy the ride. This 
the most iconic cars in Ferrari history, and if not the 90s as a total, this is a Ferrari F50, one of less than 400 ever produced. Now, in the 90s, it had a zero to 60 time of 3.6 seconds and a top speed of 202 miles per hour. Now, while that might not seem exciting by 2023 standards, for the 1990s, that was pretty insane. The predecessor to this was one of my all-time favorite Ferraris, the Ferrari F40, but these have incredibly wild and very distinct front end. Come check it out. What is your favorite supercar? So my favorite supercar is the Carrera UT Porsche. Oh, stunning. We actually had one of those last month. Maybe we'll see one again today. What are your favorite cars here today? And you can't pick a race car. I know that's gonna be your default, but you have to pick a regular street legal supercar here. Not Florida street legal, actually street legal. Okay, okay. Then I will take the, mm, the S13 and the GTR Nissan. Okay, okay. So next question, can you explain this? Cause it's, it's pretty hot out today and this is super impressive. Well, right now I pass out Hot Wheels to kids and I dress up as a race car driver. And love if you that. hold this, I have one for you. Ah, I love this. I feel so official with the flag. You're hired. I love that. Thank you. You're very welcome. So, how long have you been doing this? I think for about four or five years, but actually since 2013 in Dubai in Ferrari World. What's your favorite reaction you've ever had giving a kid a Hot Wheels? It might be the parents because they get just as hyped. Yeah? Yep, they get just as happy. Like you can see it in their face, they don't want to ask, so I have to figure it out. And I can pretty much match cars with, with personalities. Yeah, this, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Thank you so much for this. You're very welcome, I appreciate it. Thank you for the interview. Yeah. As always, we have my favorite team here, MPH Club down in Miami. You can rent exotic cars, luxury cars, Teslas, Rolls Royce, Lamborghinis, anything you want here. And they have some of their cars that you can rent here for our show today. Uh, Robert, can you take us through some of the cars that we have behind us? Of course, I'm excited to. We brought some really cool toys today. You might've seen this car before. We often take the... I love all the noise here. It's great problems. <laughs> But this is our Aventador SV, only 600 in the world. We brought this to other supercar Saturdays, but parked right next to it is a car we've never taken out before. Very excited about it. This is the brand new F8 Spider. This is Spider. new, I haven't seen this one yes. in the showroom yet. Brand new F8 Spider, gray on red. The spec is incredible. Parked right next to maybe like the most intense paint that we brought. This is a Tokyo Scion McLaren 720S Spider. This if I had to pick a McLaren spec, it would be this car. I think this is perfectly specced with the orange McLaren accents to it. I, every time I see this come out, it is amazing. But I, I really want to check out the Rolls Royce because we don't have a ton of Rolls Royce out today and they are underrated in the supercar community. But I know a lot of supercar owners that also uh, double up in their garage with Rolls Royce. This version of the Rolls Royce Cullinan is actually the black badge. So all the badges are gonna be black. The Spirit of Ecstasy is also black. Also, when you have a black badge, it comes with a little performance boost, a little more horsepower. The suspension's just a pinch lighter of the already crazy nice suspension. But this spec has a mandarin orange interior, which you probably wanna see. That's like the uh, the money of this car. So I, I only became familiar with Rolls Royce within the past few months. And my favorite thing that I have seen, the most underrated thing about Rolls Royce is, is the gyroscopic uh, wheel caps that you see in the center. The center Rolls Royce on Rolls Royce, when they spin, the Rolls Royce stays perfectly upright. And I just think that's a really spectacular luxury detail that you don't see stock from any other brand. What do you think? That interior, is, <laughs> that interior is nicer than most people's regular paint. I agree. It's a nice place to hang out. I would like to hang out here. 
Come by anytime, you know, we're located in Miami Gardens. Come check out the cars, we'll let you get inside, sit, figure out which color interior you like best. We've got options. Car rental shopping. Car rental shopping, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> no, it's even cool. You, like I said, you guys can rent these cars down here in Miami. Check out MPH Club on Instagram, their website, and their YouTube channel to see what they have in the shop. What is your favorite supercar here today? Uh, or a supercar in general? Uh, probably the Ferrari, Porsche, Ferrari. the Lamborghini, I don't know. All of them, all of them is a good answer. I relate to that depending on the day. What about yours? My supercar is right here, that Ram. Yeah. 707 horsepower out of a truck and in Baja mode, it is insane to drive. I mean, it is a menace on the road down here in Miami. We've taken it on some of the supercar rallies and just you can really bully people on the road, but I know this is your guys' first Supercar Saturday. What do you think of it so far? Everything is really cool. I'm enjoying what I've seen so far. Yeah, what about you? It's perfect setting, family setting, cars, perfect weather, perfect place, centrally located. I will be back. Awesome, thank you guys so much for coming out and joining us. This is our seventh anniversary. Actually, we, we looped back around. We've been to a few locations, but this is our first time back to the Hard Rock in a long time. So thank you guys so much for joining us and, and uh, welcome to our car family. Supercar Saturday is not only the biggest collection of supercars that you get in a single car show every month down here in South Florida, it is also one of the most meticulously organized and you should expect that after over seven years of monthly, monthly car shows. It's absolutely spectacular. And now that we're here at the Hard Rock, we are separated into different sections so you can see all of your favorite groups of cars together. Come check out all of the different sections that we have here, starting with the exotics and supercar rows behind me. Now, there is so much more here than supercars. We have a JDM section, a Porsche section, hot rods, rat rods, and we even have some food checks. We are finishing up the seventh anniversary of Supercar Saturday. How do you feel? That's insane. Uh, today was literally insane. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to say one thing. A lot of you guys don't know my partner, John, here. <laughs> He's the guy that does all the hard leg work. I'm the one that just deals with the madness. He's our behind the scenes He's guy. He's our behind the scenes guy. But I just want to say thank you for coming out. Thank you, Seminole Hard Rock. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It was a great seven-year anniversary. Look forward to seeing everybody next month. John, you got anything to say, buddy? Thank you, guys, and keep coming out, supporting us. Thank you. Thank you.